Hey there guys and welcome back to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for the longest freaking episode ever. First we have dinner, some pork and some tomatoes. And I shall get... Yeah, it's not really a good combination now, is it? How about tomatoes and bread? Pretty sure those are the same crappy skills. Well, that blows. How about pork and bread? Mmm, doesn't really seem useful with pork and shrimp. Aren't you supposed, like, never to combine, like, meat and fish? Is that, like, really disgusting? Or it makes you sick or something? I will take... Specialist and foodie, I guess. I Back then, when I recorded this, I had no clue that you could actually see what they did. So, yeah, those skills... Oh, and I only... Of course, I only got foodie. It causes food effects to remain even after you die in battle. Of course, that's completely useless if that's your only food effect. Anyway, let's go and do Chaka like a savior too, because Cha Cha apparently disappeared in the last episode without me noticing. And apparently, he's been seen here. Now, this is gonna be fun. Anyway, bring in my cowboy suit because it's still the only one I have, apart from the great jaggy armor, which I don't think I ever use again. And, of course, the totem pole gun lands, because this monster is weak to fire. And I'm not really sure what's up with cha, -Cha. like, why is this thing blue now? I thought it was green or yellowish first. But, yeah. And why is he called Chakalaka and not Cha-Cha? What mystery is this? Well, let's go and find out. First, need to load up the gun lands. Max out the stamina. Oh, man, I am not looking forward to this. This is going to be so bad. Just wait until you see it. There's a reason this episode is like 35 minutes long. Anyway, there's this Shakalaka crying for help in Area 2. Let's go there. See what the hell's going on. Alright, there's a pyramid like Star Wars Episode 4. And this tree. And that's definitely not... Oh crap, it's not a tree. Nope, that is the thing we're here to kill. Look at it. Holy shit. Oh crap, it's Metal Gear. Run, Snake, run. Yes, that thing is what we're going to be fighting. This is the Duramboros. It's a new monster for those who haven't played more Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. And it's a pain in the ass. Remember how... Mad Prince Boo 21 got at the freaking Nibble Snarf. Well, this is my bane. No, not like the crappy Batman movie. More like the monster I just hate to fight. So, what is this guy? Well, he's a brute wyvern, which means he's related to the Baroth and the Uragan. And he shares some moves with him. But this has to be his signature move, the tail spin. As you probably have seen by now, he has a gigantic tail that's kind of like a hammer. And that's pretty much his main method of attack. Also, he can flip the shit out and just launch his huge ass into the air. Which will pretty much always stun you if it hits you, because it just hits that damn hard. Oh, that is just mean. So, yeah. This guy can launch himself like... Dozens of feet up and in, up into the air. It does not make sense one bit. I mean, the game doesn't give you monster weight, but I really wonder how much this sucker would weigh. I know that when you kill it, it's like just over 20 meters long. I think, maybe longer. I'm not sure. Definitely huge. Looks huge. So let's let's say 22 meters long and. How big? Like maybe six meters, six meters tall. Uh, let's see. There, like the Tyrannosaurus Rex, is about 13 meters long and like four or five meters tall, and that weighs, I think, like four or five tons or something. And herbivores are generally always much heavier than carnivores because carnivores have to like chase for prey, and being light helps with that. So what would a Duramboros weigh? I would probably estimate him at like 20 tons or something. I mean, he's hell of a lot bigger than a T-Rex and he's a herbivore, which automatically means he's a whole lot heavier. 
So I'd say 20 tons is not completely out of the question. Also, if this guy's a herbivore, then why is he so damn pissed off at me? Apparently, Duramboros are territorial as all hell. Which, I guess, is what the big horns are for, for like fighting, like mountain goats, or triceratops, or something. Oh, this is gonna be... Why did I let go with a freaking block button, you moron? Because, yes, you can actually block that, however, it's gonna drain your stamina like no freaking tomorrow. So, yeah. What makes this guy so hard to fight, in my opinion? Well, he's deceptively fast. You'd think this guy's gonna be slow as hell, but... Ooh, Shit. Should've blocked there. Not sure that would've helped, because I think it was hitting me from the back. But yeah, if the gun lens wasn't so damn slow to put away, I would've been able to, like, dodge roll or Superman dive or something and save my ass. So there we go, my first death on camera. That sucks. <sighs> I hate this fight already. And at least feline foodie saves my food skills. Yeah, whoop they frickin' do. What also might make this fight harder for new players, or pretty much anyone who's not a very good monster hunter, or like new to the series, is that if you've used Cha-Cha, up until this point, he might be somewhat of a crutch. Like, he's really helpful healing you, keeping monsters off your ass. And you'd think this Shakalaka would help you, but nope, he got knocked the fuck out and you need to save his ass. So, don't expect any Shakalaka help for this mission either. Which also makes it a lot harder, because... Oh, okay, he fell down. He will do that on occasion, like when he's tired, or I think when, when you flash bomb him and he spins because then he's still dizzy. Or something. And that's a really good time to hit his weak spot, which is his back. Mainly the big, rocky hump looking things up on that back. Which you will pretty much never hit in normal combat. Also, this sucker can somehow dig. How do creatures this big move through the earth like it's water? That doesn't make sense. Also, get up, you stupid shakalaka. I need your help. And he's not giving it to me. Freaking super. So yay, yeah, now he's going to Area 7, my favorite area to fight in the effing flooded forest, because you can get knocked off the waterfall and end up in Area 6 and then have to swim all the way back up there. Which is a real pain in the ass. Honestly, I would love to see this guy in water, though. I imagine that he could probably maybe swim, or probably just walk along the bottom because he's so damn huge. Honestly, I thought he was going to be bigger before I fought him for the first time. Because I think reading... I remember reading on the Monster Hunter wiki that this guy can get up to like 40 meters. But apparently that was just some event quest in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd which had a giant one. Which was a pretty cool mission, I guess. They sort of replicated it in Try Ultimate because there's a an event quest with a giant Rust Durambros. Which is essentially a red... Durambros without like all the moss on him living in the deserts and he's about twice as big as this guy is luckily he's a lot easier to fight because the areas in the desert are freaking huge at least the areas he goes to also this is a pretty good time for sharpening I guess because it takes freaking forever until he gets done with it Aw, no backflips no soaring through the air oh well come at me bro no oh jeez Ah, crap, that was scary. Yeah, fighting this guy is also a lot easier if you have tremor resistance on your armor. Because he will cause the earth to shake a lot. Whenever he slams it with his tail, whenever he jumps, pretty much whenever he does anything other than just walk and charge at you, the earth will shake and you will get stunned. Which is also bad. Also, when he's spinning like this, if you happen to get, like, within the spin of his tail and hit his legs, you can knock him down. However, it is very hard to get in there once he gets up to full speed. If he gets up to full speed, you can pretty much just forget about getting in there. Just don't bother. Also, this guy is a lot easier if you have ranged weapons. Because then, say whenever he does the spin, you can just 
walk out of range and just keep shooting at him and hope he falls over. And if you use the bow, the bow has an arrow rain attack, which... Did I show that off in that one episode I used the bow in? Also, glitching the fuck out. Jeez. Oh, it broke his horns. Awesome. If you use the bow and use the arrow rain attack, you can uh, hit him on the back pretty damn easily. Which is his weak spot. Oh jeez. I need max potion. Fast. Alright, I'm safe. For now. Oh, no. Okay, that is probably one of his easiest moves to dodge. The charge thing. Also, his uh, breakable parts. I already broke his horn, so there's that. You can break the humps on his back. If you actually manage to hit him, just so you just knock him down a lot. They tend to break rather easily once you do, though. And uh, then you can break his tail. And then you can just cut off the big hammer-looking part. Which, however, the tail needs to be broken first for that to happen. Also, once you... Oh, jeez, took that to the face. Once you break his tail, which you will see because there's cracks all over it. You can actually mine it, so whenever you do this fight, bring a pickaxe. Because you can get some pretty rare stuff, and oh crap, put up your shield. Aw oh, crap, that hit me from behind. Son of a bitch. Well, at least I'm in. And I didn't get him. Bummer. So, yeah, when he does the spin and then the big jump into the air, he will stay on the ground for quite a while. You can actually use that time to go and mine his tail when he does that attack. Which, somehow, you can block. Yes, a puny shield like this can block a freaking 20-ton giant dinosaur falling on me from 30 feet up into the air. Which is just insane. That attack would kill any human in, like, one shot. Alright, come at me, bro. Oh, he's drooling, he's tired. That's probably good. However, another reason why this fight will take you forever is because this guy has so much HP. It's insane. I pretty much killed all the other monsters before this in like 10-15 minutes. Yeah, this one takes about double that amount of time. Half an hour at least. So yeah, not a very fun fight. In my opinion at least. I mean, sure, the monster is sort of cool. And he's kind of funny, I mean, the derp expression on his face whenever he just knocks himself over with his own attacks or he's soaring through the air, like, just defying physics at the drop of a hat. I must say, he's a pretty fun monster. He's not the worst designed creature in the game, in my opinion. But I wouldn't say he's my favorite. Probably because of the humiliations he's making me undertake in this episode. Don't worry though, I will fight more Durambros down the line, I think. A couple episodes after this? I'm not sure, somewhere in the late 30s, I believe. Because once you beat this, this quest disappears, but you still need a quest to farm Durambros stuff in, so there's pretty much another Durambros mission coming up. Yay. However, after this first, we're gonna go after some more new monsters, namely the Nibblesnarf and the Volvedon. Both of which are pretty damn easy compared to this guy. Honestly, if you can t if you can deal with this guy, you can deal with those. And what the hell am I farming here? Oh, I'm setting a trap. Okay then. Completely forgot about that. And he's in. When he's in a pitfall trap, you can hit his humps pretty easily as well. So just go ahead and do that. Bring a pitfall trap. They give you an easy pitfall trap, so you essentially have two. You could bring stuff for combining more pitfall traps, but I pretty much never do that. Because item space is scarce enough as it is, you need lots of stuff for carves. Because you can carve this guy four times if you kill him. I think. Pretty sure though. And add to that one carve from the tail. And possibly one from like mining the tail. You can get six carves off of this guy. Although I do think he has a lot of different stuff, so you might still not get what you want. And he didn't really go that well for him. Poor bastard. And the uh, Rust Durambarosa's spinning is even worse, because he can also like throw mud around with his tail, giving it even more range. And also might cause you to get stuck in the mud like when you fight Baroth. Which is a real pain. 
However, I fought the giant Rusted Ambrose before I ever fought the regular one, so the regular one was a lot easier in comparison. What I really hate about this, about that fight, and it also kind of applies to this one, is that whenever you get really close underneath the Durambaros, you can't see what the hell's going on. It's really confusing. You'd stop spamming the tail hammer. Alright. Stab him in the face, which doesn't really work because his head is kind of up high. It's at least above regular gun lance poking range. Alright, need to sharpen again. What also helps in this fight, bring a weapon with... Uh, what's above green? Probably blue sharpness, although I don't think that you'll have a blue sharpness weapon at this point in the game if you haven't been playing online first. I haven't. This is pretty much the best weapon I have against this guy. I have heard that poison is apparently massively effective against this guy. So if you have the chance and you don't have a good like fire weapon, just go ahead and farm the uh, Great Roggy or the Giganox. Make a poison weapon. Uh, there's not really any poison gun lances, I think. There's the Rathian one, but I think you don't actually get that until you get like high rank parts. So that's out of the question. Blocking weapon is probably a good choice against this guy. Uh, I'm not sure if Giganox and Great Roggy have a lance. I don't think so. I know that they have a sword and shield and a long sword. Longsword is probably not the best weapon for a first time Durambaros fight though because it's it can't block. It is a lot better at dodging than the Gunlands though, so that might help you out. Come on you big bastard. Just drop already. And how long is this freaking Shakalaka gonna stay unconscious? Just get up and help me out already. And I'm still wondering where the hell Cha Cha is. Oh crap. I am not happy about your desertion, Cha Cha. Where the hell are you going? You're leaving again? Yep. Oh crap, need to get a paintball on him. It's worn off already. Long ass fight and he's not even limping. Back to seven, huh? Yeah, he doesn't really have a whole lot of places he can go in the flooded forest. He can go to one, seven, two... I think four? And also ten, not sure about nine. But that's like less than half the areas in this place. And 8 also has like this land portion, but nothing ever seems to go there. Plenty of aquatic monsters will swim into the water part of Area 8, but I haven't ever seen anything go up on land in Area 8. No Royal Ludroth, no Logicris, no Gobles, no nothing. Makes me wonder why they even added that part. I mean, it's not like there's any resource gathering points there. There's like a mushroom spot, but I think that's it. Oh crap, gonna hammer me again. Oh nice, perfect timing. Might have been the auto guard talisman kicking in. Because that thing is also real great for beginner players if you have a blocking weapon. If you don't, then it's completely useless. Luckily this weapon can block, so I'm not exactly wasting that equipment slot. Oh crap. Yeah, it took that to the face. That's what she said. Oh, nice, he's tired, fell over. Time to go after the tail, because I need to break that damn thing, because then the range is at least going to be reduced. But it's so durable. Or maybe this weapon is just really, really shitty. Although I'm pretty sure it's the best fire weapon you can get him until this point. Because really, what monster uses fire? That, that we fought up until now with the Kurapeko and the Rathian. And I'm pretty sure most Rathian weapons are poison, rather than fire, if there even are any Rathian weapons at all. I don't think there's a Rathian longsword. There's a gun lance. I made it... Oh, there go the humps. That's nice. Now it looks like he has two volcanoes on his back. And from what I've read on the wiki, those humps are like for regulating his temperature. Which is why they're glowing red on the inside and smoking, I suppose. Don't worry, he's not going to be like dropping fireballs all over the place from his back. That's a whole other monster entirely. Freaking Dire Morales. Eh, Dire Morales wasn't that hard. Beat him fairly easily. Second time I fought him didn't go so well because of some horrible noob who died three times. 
fucking hate playing with random people online because most of them suck ass and they don't even know it. That's the worst part. Oh, crap. And he got me again. Well, he's not doing as much damage as I expected. Still makes me wonder why the hell I died against him, though. Freaking slow gun line sheathing, I blame that. Also, not really knowing what I'm doing against this guy, because after all, this is my first time fighting him. And this move. So annoying. I'm just gonna keep blocking, because it's too late to hit his legs. And smash. That thing, that attack will drain pretty much your entire stamina bar. It's that powerful. I'm not even sure I want to know how much damage that does, because it'll probably kill me. Also, that's still not limping. For fuck's sake. Oh well, only about 15 more minutes. I'm not even half... Well, I'm just over halfway into this. Oh, jeez. You know, it's a good thing I'm narrating this at 4am. Because parents are on vacation, little brother's on vacation. I'm home all by myself. Well, me and the bitches. Get all the bitches. Uh, yes, narrating this at 4 a.m. so I can at least let it process overnight. Even though it's already technically night, and I did not intend to jump into Area 3. Oh, well, at least there's not a gobel in there or something. Actually, that's one thing I wish that this game implemented better, like monster fights. Whenever, like, another monster shows up, they, it should pretty much make the other monster its main target. I don't really understand why everything in this game hates me. It's like if you're fighting in the volcano, you're, say, fighting a Nuragan. And there's Renoplos there. Renoplos go to the volcano as well. And what do you think they want to charge at? The gigantic 20 meter rock dragon that's gonna roll over them and crush their bones into dust? Or this puny human with his poking stick that explodes. Which is possibly the bigger threat to them? Well, the Uragan's not a carnivore, so... It's not really out to get the Renoplos, I suppose, but neither am I. I don't need Renoplos carves. Although, they, I do think they are the easiest source of monster bone M's if you need them. Which is pretty much only at the beginning of the game and then never ever again. Can I still get him? Oh crap, I'm out of Wyvern Fire. Well, too late now. Poke, poke, and I'm gonna get owned. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> that was lucky. It's a good thing his thighs aren't that fat. Now, if I could just please get a crack in that tail. And stop pounding me with it. Oh man, I miss Cha-Cha so much. Now I know how Prince Boo feels. And trust me, it doesn't feel good. I miss my little hunting buddy. Oh, nice. Staggered him. Oh, jeez. He, like, lunges at you when you stagger him. I don't think it did any damage, though. Oh, crap. I'm really starting to run out of my healing items. Oh, son of a bitch. I was healing. You douche. Well, fuck. Only one more death, and then I failed the mission. I will not do that. I will not be a Monster Hunter noob, because I played Try, God damn it! I know how this game works, more or less, even though I am using a weapon that I'm not entirely familiar with yet, fighting a monster I've never fought. So, I have some excuses. Not sure if they're valid ones or not, but honestly I don't really give two shits. Alright you big asshole, let's go. Let's dance, which is what he's good at. Look, he's doing pirouettes. Yes, the Ramboros, you can imagine you're a pretty ballerina all you want, but at the end of the day, you're still a, an ugly-ass rocky dragon thing. Also, why didn't I attack him there? I thought you could mine the humps on his back as well. Not sure how the hell I got that, or where I even got it from, but it's not true. You can only mine his tail, and yes, he's limping. So, yay. That's gonna be good. He's close to death, probably. Probably not, though. Oh, I'm so looking forward to killing this guy. And I will make him into a nice carpet. Even though he doesn't have any fur. 
I could use the moss. Moss makes it like a nice carpet, right? No? It's probably comfy, though. Wouldn't want to lie on a bed of moss, but there are probably worse things to lie on. Now, tail. Just crack. Please. I'm not gonna beg. Also, his roar. He has one of those. It's not the worst, though. Ah, oh, jeez. <sighs> Come on, I'm really getting pissed off now. Yes, you can walk forward. Oh, you. Oh, crap. Nope, not gonna get me. Just keep poking him in the belly. And crap. I'm gonna get hit by that multiple times again. Yep. Blocked it. And my stamina's out. So I take that one. What also might help against this guy? Bring. Oh, jeez. I will not let you kill me again. Oh, crap. No, 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 no. Run like hell. Just get out of the area. I don't care. Or this'll do. Whatever. Alright, back in the fight, bitch. Let's go. So, as I was saying, what might also help is bring dash juices. Or I'm not sure if you can get mega dash juices at this point in the game, but if you can, bring those. If your stamina doesn't decrease, you can very much block indefinitely. You'll still probably take some chip damage, but it could be a whole lot worse. Also, he's going to 7 again. He pretty much has a pattern. Starting to go to 7, go to 1, go to 2, go to 7, go to 1. Freaking. And I'm, I'm starting to think this is not the proper area to fight him in. I can see why they'd put him in this area, because in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, there was no underwater fighting, and areas 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8 were all devoid of water and just land. So there'd be plenty of room to fight the Durambaros in in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. However, because all those areas are made aquatic again in this game, it doesn't really leave him with a whole lot of room. Makes me think he should just have been in the deserted island instead. Plenty of room to fight him over there. He does actually show up there. Once you beat the high rank Durambaros, he will show up in the woods at night to haunt you when you're asleep. Even though you're technically not sleeping when you're out in the woods at night. Yeah, you don't want to go into those woods at night. Creepy stuff lurks there. Also, do not knock me off the water. Oh, crap. Oh, he's going to get me with that. If he's going to do the big throw himself across the freaking arena thing again. Which I hope he's not going to do. Nope, just going to fly. And that's the wrong way, dumbass. I'm not even close to being over there. All right. Just die, please. I beg of you. I want to go to bed. It's 4 fucking a.m. Why the hell am I doing this at 4 a.m.? I should just be sleeping. I was watching Tosh.0 on TV, but then that ended and the Graham Norton show came on, and I don't like that at all. Yeah, I don't even know who the guests are in this episode. Then again, I'm not much of a celebrity guy. Even though I am. A YouTube celebrity guy. 9,000 subscribers gotta count for something, right? Wait. He didn't go to one. He broke the loop. That's impossible. And he's not here either. Then he must have gone to a new area. Either that or he like fell off the waterfall and killed himself. That'd be hysterical if you could kill a monster that way. You know, that'd actually be something that I'd like to see in future Monster Hunter games, like environmental hazards that the monsters can use against you, but you can perhaps also use against the monsters. Say you're fighting a monster next to a cliff face, and the monster rams into the cliff face, and then rocks tumble down from above and fall on the monster, doing pretty nasty damage. That'd be pretty cool. Or, like, create an avalanche in the tundra. Or... I don't know, a volcano eruption in the volcano? Even though most of the monsters that live there are immune to the lava for some reason. Even though when they have absolutely no reason to be immune to lava. <clears throat> Rathalos, Falvadon, Brachidios. I can see why the Uragan and the Ignactor would be immune to lava, but not the other three. Also, Stygian Zenogra shows up in the volcano, right? Can you walk into the lava? Because that'd just be freaking stupid. 
Also, the Ramboros is in 10. No, you will not go to sleep. How did he not see me before? I was in here forever. I guess his vision must be piss poor and cats. Son of a bitch, that's my paintball. You will not steal my paintball. I need it. I don't want to go ahead and f have to waste time on farming pain berries. Jeez, how many times have I needed to sharpen in this hunt? Like five times? I thought this armor had razor sharp. I'm pretty sure it does. So, yeah. Think about that. The armor skill that makes it so that you have to sharpen your weapon only half as much. And I still needed to sharpen my weapon like ten freaking times. Maybe not ten, more like five or six. Also, the map. Well, I guess I don't need that back. Because he's not going anywhere anymore. The fight's going to end in this area. Definitely. Either he dies or I die. And I hope it's going to be him. Not me. Ah, stop roaring and just let me kill you. I'm also really bummed about the fact that I couldn't... Oh no, you're not taking my mega bug net. You son of a bitch. Oh, I was willing to take that hit. I need my bug net back. Yeah, by the way, I don't really ever use it. Well, that's a new move. I don't think he'd done that before. Kind of strange that he'd save that for the last. But yeah, that's a move he actually shares with Devil Joe, the big badass Tyrannosaur that shows up to ruin everyone's hunts in high rank. No one likes the Devil Joe. He's a douche. Kind of. Don't crush me. Yeah, go with the, uh, stand over there and pound the ground for a bit while I heal. Because I need to be real careful now. If I die now, then the last half hour will have been for nothing. And I will not stand for that. Luckily, though, this quest only accounts for half of the deaths that have occurred in this LP so far. And I've recorded 101 episodes. I only need to fight the Elatrion anymore. So, unless the Elatrion goes on a mass killing spree and kills me a whole bunch of times. Oh, beautiful. Just shot his feet off. Now you can't dance around anymore, you freaking ballerina. Now, I will go and desecrate your carcass with my bowie knife. What do we get? A shell. Alright then. What else does he have? A moss plate. Makes sense, he has plates and they're covered in moss. Moss plates. Another shell. Alright, can I get like a, a son of a bitch cat? Another shell. I thought this guy had a whole bunch of different stuff. Either that, I'm just horribly unlucky. Though I think most of the things he can give you are on his tail. I think you can carve like three or four different things from the tail alone. But yeah, look at my legs. Aren't they sexy? Yes, cats, you can dance behind me. As long as you don't steal my stuff. Someone has to dance with me. Chacha's not here. The other guy's probably still passed out. So the kitty cat will have to do. Even though he's black. And he steals stuff. Now, the rewards. Oh, beautiful shot. Nice. I love the purple, pinkish effect that they gave the explosion. Quite nice. And... How big is this bastard? Yeah, 20 meters, more or less. Closer to 21, actually. So that's still pretty big. He's not the biggest monster in the game, but he's up there. He's definitely one of the tallest, though. Now, back to the village. Oh, great, that asshole came with me. So it's not Cha-Cha, it's his buddy. And his name's Kayamba. And he can break dance with the best of them. Also, his helmet's a reference to the, uh... The big hermit crab monsters that were in... Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, and I would have really loved to see them in this game. I mean, who wouldn't want to fight those giant crabs underwater? That'd be freaking amazing. Wait, I screwed up his plans to hunt that giant monster. I, yes, I thought it was Chacha, and he takes offense at that. Okay, I'm taking part in an important secret ritual journey. Oh, he's looking for a mask, just like Chacha. And he got lost, and he ended up here, and I rescued him, so now he owes me. And he's looking for the golden ultimate mask, but Chacha ruined it. Ruined it. A wyvern stole the mask. Mm-hmm. And Kayama's gonna stay here. 
and apparently I owe him something, so I'm his minion now. Well, he's just as delusional as Cha-Cha is. So I guess he will have to do until Cha-Cha gets back. And jeez, he learns a lot of stuff. So I do believe that when you get him, he's, he'll pretty much be the exact same level as Cha-Cha was before we left. So we will pretty much be an exact replacement, except he looks slightly different. And he's more of an asshole. See, so he's level 20 already. So, yeah, I don't really have any other masks for these guys yet. I'll work on it, probably. Uh, what ability do I want to give him? Probably something useful. Uh, Blood Brothers. I don't think that's that good. Um, earplugs, nah. Attack boost. That'll have to do for now. Anyway, thank you for watching this for half a goddamn hour. Next ones on episodes will probably be a bit shorter than this one. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye bye.